the Sanctuary Crossway Miniatures right here in the heart of the Delta in Greenwood, Mississippi. Amen. We are thrilled as always and delighted that you saw fit to join us tonight or even at a later time. Amen. Amen. At to my right, Brother James Wilker, and to my left, Brother Jonathan Melton. Amen. And we just thank the Lord for this opportunity once again to bring forth the Word of God. Praise Amen. It's been dipped in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Amen. So praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, we want to just encourage you, as always, amen, get you a good King James Bible, word for word translation, take notes, follow along with us, judge what we teach based upon the word of God and not what someone else is saying, amen, amen. amen. that'll keep you straight and us too. But uh, before we do that, we want to go, as we always do, we want to go before the Lord in prayer. We have a specific need tonight, though we, uh, we may not be able to hear that request, the Lord uh, most certainly does. It may be <laughs> unspoken here, but it's not unspoken in heaven. We may not be able to lay our hands on you, but Jesus can lay his hand on you right where we're, right there where you are. Amen. So we just want to believe with you tonight on behalf of your every single need, whether it be domestic or financial, or if you need healing in your body, amen. He, uh, my provision was made for all of that on the cross, amen. Let's just believe you tonight, amen. amen. And then as always, help us pray for the, the brethren across the country, amen. Tonight is preaching the message of the cross, amen. The Lord has strategically positioned uh, several and uh, we lift them up in, in prayer always, amen. Believe them great things for their ministries. And uh, so just help us pray on behalf of these particular needs. Pray for us always uh, here at Crossway Ministries, amen. Lord, give us utterance. The words to speak is uh, would be pleasing unto him, his will. Uh, and his uh, will for us as it pertains to the, uh, the evangelism in this region and uh, uh, this is will in all things as it pertains to this ministry. Amen. Amen. So yes. let's just pray together tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight. Lord God, on behalf of the needs of the people, Lord, and that includes us here in this sanctuary, yes. Crossway Ministries, those that are home listening tonight and those that are seated at this table. Lord God, we ask you tonight that you move by your Holy Spirit. Lord, touch that person the sick in their body, let there be healing. Lord, we believe if that person will be made every bit whole tonight by the divine healer, glory to God. Let there be a miracle healing tonight, Lord, take place in the lives of those, Lord, tonight that are believing, reaching out to you by faith, Lord God, and what you did at Calvary, Lord, and we're believing for provision to come as well. Lord, you know that need in the Hallelujah. in the life of the people, in the home of the people tonight, Lord. And, yes. and uh, we just believe for you to move and make a way and provide, yes. Lord. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. And uh, those things that you uh, see fit to leave us uh, in, we know that you're going to strengthen us, Lord, to be able to endure and march through it all. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Lord, once again, we, we pray also, Lord, for all the ministers and yes. ministries across the uh, the country tonight, Lord, that you raised up in this final yes, hour, Lord, Lord to preach this gospel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're praying, Lord, that you bless them, favor them, Lord yes, God, and uh, uh, just do a great Lord. work in their Amen. life and their ministry. Hallelujah. Believe if you can draw many people, Lord God, into their uh, churches, yes. their church houses where they assemble, where they gather, and uh, Lord, also to their streaming, Lord. I know that yes. they. Uh, many times they're streaming, Lord, by Facebook and YouTube. We're believing, Lord, for uh, you to add to that, Lord. We know it's your will that none should perish and that all should walk uprightly uh, in this great truth, Lord. And we're just believing for you to do that very thing tonight, Lord. Draw people to that saving place, Lord, and that uh, sanctifying place, the cross of Calvary. Lord God, and to that place, Lord, where the message of the cross is being yes. preached and taught exclusively. Yes, so that the people can uh, grow in grace Thank and the knowledge Lord, of our Jesus. Lord and Savior. Speaking of who he is Lord. and all that he accomplished at Calvary, Lord, the many benefits, yes, Lord, yes, that are wrapped yes. up in the cross tonight, Lord. And we just believe in 
great things for our brethren across the country, Lord, to strengthen them, Lord, empower them, Lord, just uh, grant much grace that they might be able to endure oh, Lord, this, uh, this uh, uh, perilous time, and even the world, the Word of God speaks about, Lord, to endure it to the end, help us to run this race all the way to the finish line, Lord God, that we can, Lord, that we can cry out, Lord, Lord, one day oh, as the apostle Paul, I, I finish my course, hallelujah. I run the race, I finished my course, I fought a good fight, I Hallelujah. kept the faith. Yes. Lord God, and henceforth there's made up a crown of righteousness for me. Yes. And he said, not for me only, but to all of those who love his appearing. Hallelujah. Yes. That means having our eyes upon him. That means our, our vision of this great yes. uh, uh, covenant that we've been given, the understanding of the cross, glory to God. Amen. A revelation of Jesus Christ and Him crucified revealed to us. Hallelujah. Having our eyes fixed upon it. Amen. As we run this great race. Thank you for the lane that you've given us to run Thank in, Lord. Lord yes. And that we're not trying to run in anyone else's lane, yes. Lord. Not we in just vain, Lord. need Lord. your help to run in the yes. one you give us. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, Glory yes. to God. We ask, Lord, that you, Lord. Do, Thank you, you reveal Lord. to us, show us uh, your will for us. Lord, in the great yes. mission, your mandate for us, make it clear to us what yes. you desire. Lord, for us to be partakers in, to be a part of, Lord, as it pertains to getting this gospel out in this final hour yes. of the church age. Hallelujah. Lord, we're leaving you for great things on uh, Sunday morning. Yes. Lord God, we just want to thank you for the, uh, the, the the great services that you've given us, yes. Lord, the good word, yes. hallelujah. We hallelujah. thank you for all of that, Lord, for helping us, Lord, in, yes. in every endeavor that you've called us to do. We thank you for your presence, Lord, your abundant grace, the, the moving and operation of your Holy Spirit, Lord God. And we just pray, Lord, that you just continue to bless our services, Lord. Let, uh, let all flesh be removed, Lord. And, and everything that would hinder, Lord Hallelujah. God, and just yes. have your way Lord in our services, Hallelujah. Lord, just Hallelujah. have your way. Yes. Lord God, if you have your way, we know that everything will be all right. Draw people into our service Hallelujah. as well, yes. Lord, and, and add people to our streaming, Lord. I've seen an increase, Lord, yes. and I know that. I know that you're doing it, Lord. Man, you Lord. certainly no. can't be because yes, of uh, who I am or any uh, individual, Lord, but it's because of uh, uh, the message of the truth, yes. the gospel yes. and truth. The the truth. Christ and Him crucified Lord. is going yes. forward. We know that you desire for people to hear that, Lord God. And we're so thankful, Lord. Once again, it's a privilege, it's an honor yes. to be a part of what you're doing in this final hour, Lord. We're glad, so thankful tonight that you've allowed us to be a part of it, Lord. We thank you tonight, Lord. We give you praise. We Hallelujah. give you glory. Thank we you. give you all the honor. Help us tonight, yes, Lord. I we need, need your help. I anoint our lips to speak, yes. Lord, and every ear to hear. Help us to do no damage to your word, but help us to speak with clarity and understanding tonight, Lord. Yes. And as always, I surely Lord, need your help, Lord, Lord God. I'm just believing you for great things in this broadcast. Lord, that it would touch many people, Lord, tonight, that it would be deposited upon a fertile ground of the heart and uh, lives would be changed. People saved, even, Lord yes. God. Oh, and uh, that uh, our understanding of the cross, Lord, and what was accomplished there would be uh, increased tonight, Lord yes. God. You're a God of increase, Lord, and and we just want to give you praise and glory and honor. We oh, ask Lord. all of these things in the mighty name of oh, Jesus. Jesus. And everybody said amen. And amen. amen. If you would, amen. Let's take just a moment. Just lift our hands to amen. heaven and praise him. Amen. Hallowed be thy name. Lord God, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you all the honor tonight. We exalt you and magnify you tonight. You're worthy of all the praise, all the glory. And all the honor. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Well, glory to the precious Lamb of God. Amen. Amen and amen. Go ahead and give the Lord a good hand. Clap of praise tonight in the house of God. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Oh. Thank you, Lord. We'll praise the Lord. Amen. Well, we're honored to I'm honored to sit with these men at this table tonight and share the word of God uh, with you. I know these men are they're always uh, uh, digging into the word and uh, searching out the, the meaning. Uh, you know, so we, we need to know what the Bible says, but we also need to know what it means. Amen. Amen. We have to 
do some digging sometimes to bring clarity to what it's saying. Yes. And uh, we should have learned as we go, amen, yes, as we study. Uh, we're, we're, we're learning as we go. We're learning right there with you, amen. And we just uh, thank God for the treasure that we have in his word tonight, amen. And uh, I'm going to begin reading. I'm going to cover uh, some reading that we've already done. Just kind of back up just a little bit in my in my uh, reading, and then I'm going to turn it over to Brother Jonathan. He has some things to share with us tonight on a particular verse of Scripture. I'm just going to begin in, in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 7 and verse 2. I'm just going to begin reading there, and then I may stop and make a comment here and there. We basically covered most all of this last Wednesday night or maybe the Wednesday night before but uh, we're headed to verse 11 tonight. That's where we're going to stop and these men are going to deal with. So uh, uh, take your Bibles, take notes tonight, amen, and let's get to marching, amen. amen. It says in yes. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, and uh, where did I say verse 2? Verse 2. <laughs> Receive us, Paul said, we have wronged no man. No man, we have corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man. I speak not this to condemn you, Amen. Uh, for I have said before that you are in our hearts to die and live with you. Praise Amen. Uh, Paul's ready to die for the church in Corinth. Amen. And he says, great is my boldness of speech toward you. Amen. Yes. Great is my boldness of speech toward you. But it's, it's a loving uh, speech that Paul, he spoke with boldness and he spoke with clarity and understanding, but it was out of love that yes. Paul, it was bold, amen, and, and sometimes our uh, situations demand and require that boldness, but if it's the case, if that's the case, it's from the heart, yes. because it's needful of the people, amen, amen. and uh, you know, the, the church should not become offended when that boldness is presented, amen, the, right. the sad thing with the modern uh, watered down church. They've heard so many watered down uh, messages. And what their uh, their response to a, to a bold message is we're offended instead of uh, we're willing to repent. So we have to we have to move beyond that being offended. Amen. The, amen. You know the church just needs to grow up in Christ amen. a little bit. Amen. Oh, yeah. and not be offended by everything that's said. Amen. From from the heart of the man of God that loves the flock and loves the church, as the Apostle Paul did. Amen. Yes, yes. And he's not the only one that loves the church. There's people that's that's around today that has a great love and a care for the flock and a, a care for the church. And every once in a while, they might speak with a boldness. Amen. They might speak with a with a little spark to it. Amen. But the, it's for the church's benefit, trying to wake some folks up, Hallelujah. trying to get some people's attention. Yes. Amen. Amen. So that's what Paul was doing here. There was things in Corinth that needed to be dealt with, and there took some sternness and boldness of speech to deal with these things. Amen. He said, "Great is my boldness of speech towards you." Amen. And and. And he said, great is my glory of you. Amen. So Paul dealt with them boldly. And then he would also glory and speak well of them in situations as well. Amen. I was not lost in the church in Corinth. There was things that needed to be dealt with there. Uh, even in the church that Paul planted the, in Corinth. And, and there's always going to, that's what the church is here for, amen. This, yes. uh, there's always going to be issues arise that need to be confronted and dealt with according to the word of God, out of love from the pastor to the people, amen. Uh, you know, the Bible says God chases those that he loves, amen. Yes. He, he brings correction, he brings reproof, even rebuke, but he does it out of love. And he does that oftentimes not just through the Holy Spirit, but through the the overseer or the pastor of the flock, amen? Yes. And uh, he works through that individual, amen? Yes. Amen. He says, great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is my glorying of you. He said, I'm filled with comfort. I have 
I'm exceedingly joyful in all your in all of our tribulations. Amen. amen. Whatever they might have been. Amen. And <laughs> Paul was joyful. He said we are joyful even in our tribulations. Amen. The things that we have to endure. Amen. So the uh, the church in Corinth and their willingness to repent of the things that Paul dealt with him about brought great joy to him great and his joy. companions. Yes. Uh, in the uh, uh, in, in, in his companions in evangelism, that those that were, were those faithful soldiers that were marching with him, Amen. He said, I, "I'm exceedingly joyful, even in all of our tribulations." He said, "For when we were coming to Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Whereout, without, were fightings, and within were fears." Amen. We covered this last. We said, I don't want to spend much time there, but there was trouble out some without, amen, and there were trouble within. Paul spoke of within himself. There were fears within, amen. I think he was more so fearful and troubled over whether or not the church in Corinth would receive uh, his stern uh, rebuke as it pertains to the sins that was taking place in the church in Corinth. There was... Uh, there were some things that had to be dealt with. There was incest, fornication, uh, departure from sound doctrine, idolatry, uh, just to mention a few. Right. And these things had to be dealt right. with, and he just called it for what it was. Amen. And then they called the church to repentance. So there was, and then it seemed that Titus was delayed about bringing him a report as to whether or not they received uh, his uh, epistle and his call to repentance. And uh, Titus was one that was handed this epistle to deliver it to the church in Corinth. So rightly so, he was concerned about uh, that church. You know, he was concerned about their welfare. He was concerned whether or not they would receive his letter that he wrote to them, uh, demanding that there be repentance Amen. for these sins. Amen. Yes. He said, nevertheless, listen, nevertheless, God, but God, that means but God, who comforts those who are cast down, comforted us Hallelujah. by the comfort and by the coming God. of Titus. Well, Praise Titus God. showed up right in time, right, right on time. Might have been four days late, but he showed up right on time. Amen. 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 When he did, he brought great comfort to the Apostle Paul because he brought the report that the church in Corinth received your letter, the apostle to the Hebrew. He presented to Paul, the church is repenting, they received your letter, and they are receiving you, the Amen. apostle Paul. So that brought great joy, great comfort uh, to the apostle. Amen. And, and you know, I can relate to some of these things. I know you men can as well. When you stand before a group of people, whether it be in the church house, whether it be at the juvenile detention center, nursing home, jail, prison, or just wherever you might be. Amen. It brings great joy and great, great comfort when people do uh, receive what is being delivered to them. It may not have been in the form of an epistle or a letter, but you're standing there presenting to them the gospel, Hallelujah. amen, of yes. Christ and the crucified. Yes. So, you know, it is refreshing it is. when you know yes, it is, uh, it is right. comforting. It does bring joy does. When, when you realize that some are receiving uh, what is being Come said. On. And sometimes in our presentation of the gospel, Amen. It's, it's not always a hug and a kiss. Sometimes there's a rebuke. Sometimes there's a correction. That's always needful, no matter what type of setting it might be, whether Amen. it's in the church house or wherever. Amen. Hallelujah. And, uh, but those people that are able, you know, one preacher, and I, don't know, I think I was the one that said it, uh, but I think I've said it so much. Uh, but anyhow, you know, those that are willing in, uh, to receive the rebuke, those that are willing to receive the reproof will go on to become all that God desires them to be. But those that are unwilling to receive the correction, the reproof, and the rebuke, they will never arrive at the place that God is desiring for them to land That's right. in their spiritual walk. You have Amen. to be willing. You know, no one's been rebuked any more than I have. Amen. So you have to receive these things. Amen. And, and then you repent of it and you just keep marching like Simon Peter did. He he accepted the rebuke of the Apostle Paul. Hallelujah. As he yes. retains what he was uh, doing and is for causing to be. That was a that was a terrible thing. Causing this apostle was causing 
uh, division in the church by sitting with the Jews, amen, and uh, all the time having and knowing the, the, the gospel of grace and that the Gentiles were being changed mightily by the power of God, but yet he would withdraw for his fear of men when those came down from Jerusalem. And Paul rebuked him to his face. Amen. But I'm so glad that Simon Peter didn't turn in his papers. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. He kept watching. <laughs> he grew, Amen. He, he, he received it. Come on. Amen. And, and, and we know he did because he wrote those uh, yes. he tremendous Paul. epistles yeah. that he wrote, first and second Peter, and then even commended the Apostle That's Paul right. said, my, 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 he calls him my beloved brother Paul. Amen. So, uh, you know, that's what it takes. It's, 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 it's a great thing when you see people that are that are teachable Amen. and willing to receive on, the correction. You know, both, and the thing of it is, I've seen both. I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. Amen. I've had people tell me, we don't need to be warned. Well, that tells me you need to be warned more. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. Because, Hallelujah. you know, you're puffed up. Pride puffed up. Exactly. is puffed up there. You, you, you're you trying to tell me that you're all right like you are when, when you're not. You're a long ways from it. That's right. Amen. So, nonetheless, it's, I've seen the good, bad, and the ugly as it pertains to all of this. Amen. What yes. man? Verse 6. Six, seven, six, six. six, okay. Nevertheless, God, but God who comforts those who are cast down, comforted us by the coming of Titus. And not by his coming only, but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted. Notice he was comforted in you. Amen. Speaking of those in Corinth, uh, here's a man of God. Amen. Uh, a disciple of, of Paul. Amen. Paul fought, fathered. Titus in the faith, just as he did uh, Timothy, at least it seems to me that's the case, amen. So he was even joyful. He was comforted, amen. Yes. Right. You know, I kind of put myself in Titus's shoes, you know. He's the one that had to take this letter uh, from the apostle Paul to the church in Corinth and deliver it to them by hand, calling that people you know, so he's the one standing at the door. He's the one getting uh, out of the rocks. He's there. that's right. He's <laughs> the one that can get the <laughs> get the rocks. <laughs> Amen. But they dropped the rocks. Praise, Praise God. God. They dropped the rocks and they received the letter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They dropped the rocks and they received the letter. Amen. Amen. So Titus was rejoicing. They yeah. received it. Hallelujah. And they Praise received God. it. Paul. They repented and they have received you. And praise God, they've accepted me. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Can you see that in reality yes. there? Amen. Yes. And so it says, and, and not by his coming on, but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted in you when he told you. Uh, when he told us your earnest desire and your mourning, the mourning there means that this letter from the Apostle Paul, the Holy Spirit was all over that letter. Oh, he was, Amen. Bringing great conviction. Yes. Right. The letter that Paul wrote was written on the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. That's what he talked about. That's what he mean when he said, I come to you not in word only, but in the power and the power of God in the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. Yes. When God's word is going and forth, amen. Uh, there's going to be conviction. That'll make people slide from one end of the pew to the other. I've seen them, man. And just, man, yeah. they wear the cushions out, sliding. There's conviction that does that. That's what, that makes them have to go to the bathroom a half a dozen times. That's a good thing. <laughs> in the service, amen. Yeah. It's conviction that's yes. doing that, right. and they're rejecting what God's trying to do right. instead of embracing it, amen. Embracing. And repenting. Repentance needs to take place, Hallelujah. amen. And you won't have to worry out to say to your breakfast slide from one end of the pew to the other. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. And he Praise said, Hallelujah. And he said that when he told us your earnest desire and your mourning, they were sorry over their sin and uh, what they had allowed to go on in the church. See, there was this one person in particular, amen, that was engaged in fornication and they just seemed to just kind of sweep it under the rug, yeah. so to speak, and they allowed it to go on, amen. And uh, Paul had to put a stop to that because if you don't, that would just bleed over and it just fester. And next thing you know, that church of Corinth become nothing more than a breeding ground for all sorts of error right. and sin if you don't if you don't deal with those kind of things. Amen. amen. And he says there, and in your fervent mind toward me, Paul rejoiced. 
you know, it's, it's a good feeling to know that the church that you founded and, and got, that you planted and the people there, you know, they, they're fervent about you. Amen. amen. They, yes. they care about you. Yes. They're not trying to bypass you. Amen. amen. So that, that brings comfort. They, that brings joy yes, and to, to this man of God. Your fervent mind toward me, their expression of love toward the apostle Paul. Amen. amen. So that's always a good feeling. Oh, hey, man, you know, we get enough rocks. Amen. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hey, Amen. Well, you know, I didn't mean to go there, but I'm going to tell you a brief overview. You know, when we was in Honduras one time teaching in that church, and, and I, I've told the story a number of times, those witch doctors were standing outside throwing rocks on top of the building, tin roof about four, four inches above my head. It was real loud. Well, they're trying to shut you down. They're throwing rocks, trying to shut you down. Amen. But what after it's over with, I just kept preaching. The witch doctors, this is true. This is a true story. The witch doctors finally went off. They realized they couldn't shut the, uh, the the missionary down, the preacher down. And then at the end, you know, we, we were refreshed and was great joy because of our persistence in the matter. People were filling the altars. We gave an altar call for everybody to come up and see the baptism with the Holy Spirit and everybody everybody just got up and come forward. Amen. Amen. People were being touched in a great and mighty way. What a blessing. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. The pastor said, you know, uh, what little bit of English he could speak. Brother Felix was the translator. Y'all remember Brother yes. Felix? Yes. Amen. Brother and, and, uh, Amen. And Brother Felix said, the pastor said, we're glad that you came from the United States. We are blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. So that's always a good thing. Amen. Amen. When when the people are fervent uh, in their mind toward the man of God Amen. and the one that's delivering the message. Amen. Yes. And, and it says so that he said so that I rejoice the more. Amen. For though I made you sorry, amen, uh, with a letter, amen, I do not repent. In other words, I'm not sorry that I made you sorry, That's amen, right, because right. the sorry, the, the, you <laughs> being God. sorry, amen, amen, worketh unto repentance, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. That was the whole that was the whole you, need for the letter being sent, right. amen, amen, to work repentance. So, he said, though I made you sorry with the letter, that epistle that he wrote to the church in Corinth, I don't repent. I'm not sorry for what I did. Amen. And he said, for I perceive that the same epistle has made you sorry, though it were but for a season. Amen. In other words, when you repent of something, amen, that, 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 that sorrowness and that burden that you're carrying around, knowing that it's not right, is lifted. Amen. Hallelujah. Life oh. now comes. Death is gone and life comes. Thank that you. That life, that freedom, oh. freedom now comes. Oh. And, and, and that uh, sorrow oh, and that, that weight of death that you're carrying around yes, that it is, is gone now. It's been lifted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he says, uh, mm. Amen. And he says, verse 9 says, Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, amen, but uh, but that you sorrow to repentance. Amen. Amen. I rejoice amen. now that you repented. And once again, that's what it was all about. Oh, what joy if it people is. would just oh. repent, just amen, repent. The, and let that burden be oh, lifted, Lord repent of God. that sin, repent of that wrong direction, repent of that uh, false doctrine, repent of those things, amen. and let that burden be lifted. Hallelujah. Joy and peace yes. and rejoicing, jubilee can come into your life again. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't have to continue uh, down that uh, road of uh, of sorrowness. Amen. Amen. You can repent. Amen. And make things right. Hallelujah. So, so now I rejoice. Not that you were made sorry. Amen. But that you sorrowed to repentance. For you were made sorry. Sorry, excuse me, after a godly manner, in other words, toward repentance, a godly manner, that you might receive damage by us in nothing. Amen. It, it wasn't, it wasn't bringing damage by the strongness of Paul's speech no. and the call to repentance, amen, but it, it accomplished what it was set out there to accomplish, Hallelujah. amen, being uh, even under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, this yes. man of God was determined uh, to, to change the direction that the church in Corinth was headed, amen, amen. because they was headed 
amen, downhill, and headed for destruction, amen. Yes, yes. And he says there in verse 10, he says, For godly sorrow works repentance to salvation to life. I've yes. already said it, amen. Godly sorrow works repentance to life. To not life. Yes, to salvation, to life, yes. not to be repented of, amen, uh, but the sorrow of the world works death. In other words, uh, just to be the sorrow of the world, you know, you can have remorse because you right. get caught right. in something and that's just the sorrow of the world amen it's not really working repentance because it's a part from being in right relationship with the lord in the beginning amen, amen. amen. Yeah. but you know just you know just being sorry doesn't accomplish anything it does not that's no right. uh just a quick example then i'm going to turn it over to brother jonathan you know jesus you know, the Bible says that he repented, but the, the, the sad thing is, I know people that's been trying to put Judas in, into heaven for, for, for years, and they still haven't been able to release Judas, uh, that he went to damnation. But the Bible says that Judas repented, but he repented to men. Yeah. He didn't repent to the Lord. That's right. That's there was, right. He was sorry he was for sorry. what he did as it pertains to uh, turning Jesus over to uh, uh, the, those that came to take him captive. He was sorry. He even went back and threw the, the money down before the religious leaders that hired him to do such a thing. He was sorry for all of that. But he still died lost. He did not repent. That's right. Right. He did. He repented to men. To men. He just he just showed his sorry his his sorrowfulness toward men, and he never repented unto the Lord yes. for that day. If he had repented to the Lord, just like Simon Peter did, yes. right when when. Paul rebuked and chastened him. Amen. He'd be in heaven. But the same yeah, thing is today, he's been in hell now for 2,000 years and he will be there forever. Amen. For from turning away amen. from Christ. Amen. Right. See, that's not. Amen. amen. Yeah. Go ahead, Brother Jonathan. Amen. Um, I was listening to you talk about Peter, praise God, and you know how he, you know, he grew. He grew in the Lord and he was able to write grow in grace in second corinthians i mean second peter 3 18 he said now grow in grace in the knowledge of our lord and savior jesus christ you know that same one that that you know denied the lord three times he wrote about later in one of his epistles about those false teachers and, and those that did apostasy denying the lord he wrote so you know when you properly repent you know, that gives you the right. The word of God gives us the right. When we accept the word of God, when we repent, you know, Peter denied the Lord, but yet he turned around and wrote about those that denied the Lord. <laughs> you see that there. Praise God. Yes. Because he truly repented. He was growing. Um, and I was listening to you talk. Uh, then, you know, of course, I'm praying and seeking the Lord uh, how he would have me to, to explain this. And I'm going to be looking at verse 11, but... Um, you know, you was talking about over there in verse two and three, receive us, we have wronged no man, we have corrupted no man, we have defrauded no man. I speak not this to condemn you, for I have said before that you are in our hearts to die and live with you. Great is my boldness of speech toward you. And, and uh, I, I said that to say, well, I want to talk about the subject matter that I have. You know, when you preach the gospel, Boldness of speech has to do with the bluntness at times. His bluntness of speech is the letter he wrote them was because of his great love for them. Right, he, right. he had to deal with sin. And he had to warn. And and let me read this right here and I'll explain what I'm talking about. It says, uh, for behold this self-same same thing that you sorrowed after a godly sort. What carefulness it brought in you. Yes, what clearing of yourself. Yes, what indignation. Yes, what fear. Yes, what vehement, vehement desire. Yes, what zeal. Yes, what revenge. In all things, you have approved yourself to be clear in this matter. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going to touch on all of those. The Lord and, and seeking the Lord, I feel like he led me to deal with 
mostly with that fear part. I have Acts 19 I want to go to. Um, and I looked up the word fear right there. And it's, it's interesting. And I was asking the Lord. I was thinking about some things that people say. They say, y'all shouldn't preach fear. You're preaching fear. You know, you're preaching fear. You shouldn't, you know, all that warning. You know, they don't want to hear that. People in the world, in the secular world, and in the church, they they accuse us of things. They say, y'all, you preach fear. You preach too much this and that and the other. No, really what they're saying is they don't want to repent. Uh, right. When they hear sound doctrine, they don't want to receive it. And you were talking about uh, those, the joy right here, the great joy of, and the comfort that Paul had knowing that they received his letter and they repented. And I was thinking, you know, at times when I go to the jail or the nursing home and I preach and, and I feel like I, sometimes that's the devil, the accuser of the better. You preach too hard. You're too hard on, you know, you know, warning and preaching, you know, clear cut straight to the point. And you know, the whole, and sometimes I'm thinking, Lord, was I was I too hard, you know? And then I'll get up to leave, and some of the people will say, "Thank you, thank you for coming." Right. And, and I'm thinking, just when you think that nobody received it, then somebody received. Thank Amen. you for that. I needed that, and I go to jail, and and some of the same ones come back every time. They keep coming back. They keep wanting because see what what I'm trying to say is when you're preaching the truth. The Holy Spirit's gonna, He's gonna decide, decide, rightly divide, you know, those that are that want it from those that don't. You know, He's rightly, the Holy Spirit does the work. Right. You know, I, I wrote this down about fear means, and this is interesting when I looked it up, fear means fright, to frighten, fright, or to make, bring an alarm. Yeah, I used to, I was thinking, well, I first see fear, one of the definitions of fear is reverence and, and to be in awe. To be in awe of God is really is it's to be in awe of God, is the fear of God, but it also means to fright or to bring an alarm. And I, when I looked up that definition, I was thinking about those naysayers that say you shouldn't preach that. You, know, you shouldn't preach fear. Well, that's one of the definitions. The, the Holy Spirit is wanting people to to come to uh, to be on a conviction because I because it says right here I wrote this down the preacher who warns it's the preacher who warns and and it's the Holy Spirit who puts the fear see we warn and we give sound doctrine yeah and the Holy Spirit puts the fear in a person so we need we need that as Paul says boldness of speech we need that we need sound doctrine amen we don't need anything sugar coated. Right. We need the clear gospel presented so people can repent. I mean, so people can, you know, some won't, some will fight against it. But uh, over in uh, Acts 19, here's an example of how there was a group right here. I, I looked at some that didn't repent, and I looked at some of the ones who did repent. And I got some examples right here in verse 11, and God brought special miracles by the hands of Paul so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs and apron were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons and the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them then certain of the vagabond Jews exorcists took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus saying we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches Amen and before I go any further about the, the positive, the good of those that did repent, I'm going to talk about that. But first I want to make a point. This is an example of those can be, that can be set under the preaching of the Apostle Paul and seeing the miracles that God wrought by him, that God was doing through Paul, that God was one doing a miracle, and seeing people being healed. So they were, they were without excuse, certain of the vagabond Jews, Exodus, to, to call, to, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits in the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by the, by Jesus whom Paul preaches. They didn't have, this wasn't faith to repentance. They just wanted to use the name of Jesus, but it wasn't mixed with faith. Right. It, it wasn't faith in Christ. They were just 
So that's an example of those that can be here in the gospel and seeing God move, but yet they're seduced, they're, you know, they're being influenced by powers of darkness. So they can even use the name of Jesus, but it's not, it, they're not repenting. And there were sons, there were uh, seven sons of Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests which did so. And, and, and the evil spirits answered and said, Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know, but who are you? And I wrote this down. Satan does not fear those who don't fear God. That's right. We need to hear that. Satan does not fear those who do not fear God right. and don't have their faith solely in Christ. That's, it. That's it. It's something to think about right there. See, right. even the evil spirits, they knew who Paul was because <laughs> his ministry was being proven. He, you know, he was, he, they knew he was different. Paul was empowered he had faith he had faith in christ and he was empowered by the holy spirit amen led of the spirit so even the demons even the devil know he knew he said I, jesus i know the evil spirit answered and said jesus i know and paul i know but who are you in other words if you don't have proper faith it don't matter how much religion how much you use the name of jesus or say jesus you can go to altar over and over and cry bitter tears, but it won't. You still won't repent if it's worldly sorrow. That's if it's right. not godly right. sorrow that leads to repentance, how many times have people and and, and I, hey, I've been there too, going to the altar over and over again, but but not sorrowing to repentance because we still want to hold on to something. You know, people that's not wanting to give up sin or want to use Jesus, just use the name of Jesus. Say, I know Jesus, but <laughs> or I, I believe in the name of Jesus, but it's not unto repentance. Esau was an example of that, you know. Over and Paul made reference of Esau. And let's slow down. Let's stop right there. Just, Amen. Praise God. God yeah. just, just go ahead and, and think about Esau. But what was the one reason? Okay, the, the, the demon, Satan, the devil, uh, they they recognized Jesus right to so, but they also recognized the apostle Paul. Amen. Well, why was that? Amen. Well, the Bible teaches us, and I understand the Apostle Paul said, I'm determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him Amen. crucified. Amen. Amen. So there is his position of victory over the powers of darkness. That's Amen. What and, and then that. Colossians Amen. chapter 2 Amen. in verse 15 tells us plainly, Amen, through the cross, it tells you right there, you couple verse 14 with uh, verse 15, Colossians chapter 2, it tells us there that uh, on the cross, Jesus spoiled, that means that he overthrew, he defeated every power and every principality on the cross. So the cross is the place where the, the, the powers of darkness, even Satan himself, is overthrown and defeated. And with that individual, whether it be the Apostle Paul, though well, he's the one that we're looking at right here in this verse of Scripture, but the same application is with everyone, amen. Uh, our, our victory over the powers of darkness comes solely and exclusively uh, by faith in what Jesus did Calvary. So the representation here is that, you know, just because you use the name of Jesus is not going to bring about a victory right. over the powers of darkness, over sin or anything, you know, but we, you know, we hear, you hear me say it all the time, you know, 99.9% .9 of the church world out here is identifying uh, with Jesus, but there's no power because they have excluded him from the place of power, which right. is his sacrifice, which Amen. is the cross. Amen. There's no victory just in the use of the name Jesus. Right. Amen. Right. Paul Amen. said, I'm determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified because he knew that that is where he would experience the operation of the Holy Spirit and the power of God Amen. at work in his life. Once again, and I have to say this on the back side of that, that doesn't mean that the enemy won't try to... Uh, uh, to come against us. He's non-stop. He's going to try to come against us, but our victory always, amen, always over uh, his exploits and schemes and strategies is always going to be because of the cross and our faith in that, amen. amen. What that teaches us is where faith must be in the cross, the death of Jesus Christ, 
There we find victory over every scheme, strategy, all the powers of darkness. No other place no uh, has Praise God Lord. given us, not even in prayer. No. You know, we, we see these, I see these, uh, and I have seen these signs around town at the grocery store, amen, what the country needs is prayer. Well, you know, that's a good thing, but what the country really needs, amen, is, is preaching of the cross, amen. 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 But because prayer is not, that alone uh, is not going to deliver you from the powers of darkness, amen. Right. It's faith in the cross, amen. That's it. That's it. Always faith amen. in the cross. So you, you, you can quote a million scriptures and quote them verbatim, uh, word for word, uh, that's not going to give you power over victory over the powers of darkness. It's faith in the cross, Amen. always, all the time, and for everything. Amen. And everywhere. That's Amen. Right. Praise God. Amen. Go, go ahead. Uh, I was thinking of Psalms 145, talking about prayer. Psalms 145, verse 18 says, The Lord is near unto all of them that call upon him, to all of them that call upon him in truth. Yes, it's near to all them that call upon him in truth, and that has reference to Jesus Christ and them crucified. I mean, praying that when our faith is right, that's the prayer that God hears. You know, also about using the name of Jesus. You know, people, you know, you know, go around saying rebuking the devil. I rebuke the devil, or, <laughs> or no. you know, a man told me one time, get some oil, some, and go around your house and. and and grow oil around your house. Just sprinkle oil everywhere. The devil would laughs at stuff like that. Yeah. If our faith ain't in the cross, it, it don't matter what you do religiously. You know, I just want to throw that in there. No, no. Let, let me reinforce that just a little bit. I, the church needs to know that. They need to know Amen. that. Amen. You, 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 <laughs> if you could rebuke the devil, there'd be no need for Jesus to die at the cross. Amen. We, 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 we're unable to rebuke the powers of darkness. We must, the church must know that, amen. The powers of darkness were not only rebuked, but they were defeated at the cross. Our victory over the powers of darkness, amen, is not what we say to the devil, right. amen. Just like the, uh, these uh, sons of Sceva used them, they, you know, they just yeah. laughed at him. They ran out of the house, they stripped yeah. them naked, they, they ran out of the house. We don't know you. Amen. So, you, you know, they still have power over that individual. Right. It's Amen. faith in the right. cross that gives us victory. Amen. Amen. The, the powers of darkness were not, once again, were not only rebuked at the cross. Amen. But they were defeated and at the cross. Amen. Amen. Right. And, and I, for years, you know, Sister Debbie and I, well, I believe her out of it, you know, we were, uh, we were influenced by a lot of this word it's faith true. stuff that you see big in, in the cross preaching camp today, you know. Uh, we, we dabbled in a little bit of that, you know, name it, claim it, blab it, grab it. You got power over the enemy, just speak right. it, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, and if you sick, you, you sin, you know, and just, you know, all of that nonsense. Right. Amen. And we had to be convinced by the word of God that the cross was that uh, place of victory. Once we seen it, then, you know, we began to understand things a whole lot better. And we're still yes. growing in that understanding. Yeah, but if one thing had done, it realized the folly that I was involved in and the fallacy that I was involved in, amen. We cannot speak anything into existence. We cannot speak anything out of existence, amen. Right. I, the, if there's life in our in our words, praise God. Amen. This, here you go. The, those words that we speak life is us preaching the cross. Thank you. Amen. And words that speak death is us preaching anything but the cross. And that's my definition of that. Amen. Amen. We, we preach the cross. There you'll find life. There you'll find victory. Hallelujah. Amen. If you're preaching anything else, there you'll find defeat, Amen. death, condemnation, Amen. and uh, road to destruction. Amen. Uh, go ahead. A couple more things. I didn't get to the good part yet. We're going to leave time. Amen. Amen. I'm going to get to the good part about it. Go ahead. About the fear of the Lord, you know those when they repented, the men, and the men in whom the evil spirit was leaped leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them, leaped on them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Wow! Because they didn't have proper faith, like Brother Wayne said, he already knew that story. Now these were the apostles, right? 
No, these are the seven sons of Sheba. Sons of Sheba. Oh, the sons, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. They, they were just simply emulating what they were seeing the Apostle Paul doing. But there was no real faith. There wasn't no real no, faith. There wasn't right. any real right. faith there. Amen. Right. right. But, but listen, it was known, it says right here, now see, that led to others that word got around about this and watch what happened. In verse 17, this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus and fear fell on them all and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified and many who believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. We're talking about repentance. We're talking about oh, the, yeah. the yes, true yes, fear yes, of the yes, Lord. Yes. When it comes, it's going to cause repentance. Because they heard what happened. You know, that people was in awe of them, you know, amazed about what what was going on. It says that many of them also which used curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and, and prevailed. See, when you truly repent, you'll throw away a lot of your stuff you've been putting faith in your books. Right. I remember one time, you know, when I got saved, I used to still want to listen to all my other music. Now, I'm going to touch on somebody's pet, somebody's golden cow. But some Christians still like to listen to all that other music, you know, and don't really bother. But it bothered me. I was listening to secular music. Whole bunch, I, had a, I, had, I had hundreds of dollars worth of cassette tapes. I mean, I, I mean, everything you can think of, all that music, I loved it. It was hard. I, I was still trying to listen to it after I got saved for a while, for a few months after I got saved. But the Holy Spirit dealt with me, convicted me, and said, throw that away. Yeah. And somebody would have said, somebody said, well, how can you take the phone, shot phone? Because I didn't want to buy that. I didn't want to buy anything. I didn't want to buy, buy anything. I threw it away. I threw Amen. it away. No, I threw, I mean, hundreds of dollars worth of cassette tape. I'm just trying to make a point. I'm just, you know, testifying, you know, when the Lord is working, you don't want those things, those things you used to listen to or go to. You don't want to no more. I'm talking about true repentance. Yes. Praise right. God. And, and so mightily grew the word of God. Okay, let's, 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 let's kick God. that around just a minute. Amen. Amen. Now, people need to understand, I, you said it clearly and rightly, that doing those things didn't bring victory, but you've done those things because victory right. had come. Right, he Amen. was working because he was Amen. God was working. Repentance, coming back to the victory right. place, God. which is the cross. That's right. Amen. Now, you know, your heart has changed. Amen. And uh, that, that, uh, that nature, that old nature, that old man's not ruling in your life anymore. Flesh is not ruling. All of those things that would cause you to bend in that direction has been dealt with at Calvary. Every power and every principle of principality. Now when you creature creation, you've got a divine nature in us, but no longer should, no longer desire those things of that old nature. Right. Get into that right. Amen. 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 The cross changes all that. Just looking at Brother Chris Cole here, he says the cross is the only victory that not only God recognizes, but that Satan recognizes. Yeah, Satan right. recognizes. He, you, knows. <laughs> yeah, he, he knows. He knows that the cross is where he's defeated. Amen. And that's the reason the, he's always trying to get the church involved in so many other things. Well, if he can get the church into thinking that within themselves they can uh, rebuke me or they can speak things in existence, that word faith, you know, there was a time that we was dabbing in that, but the cross is what brought us an understanding of the truth. We had to come out. We had to repent of that Amen. and not only, you know, leave it, but denounce, denounce it, it. And, and, and declare it to be wrong. Amen. And these people that continue to claim the cross, but they're unwilling to denounce that old religion, uh, they have not really embraced the cross because it's going to cause you to say bye-bye to all that and then warn others of that deception as well. Amen. Because you know how deadly and devastation, devastating those things are now. It's false. Amen. That's right. Amen. But everybody that I know that's embracing the cross has been delivered from something. Come on. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Whether it's the world, religion, or just we all come out, and that's the reason, something you know, God. that's the reason we rejoice in the message of the cross and the, 
it's not so much just the message, but it's what the message points us to, the, which is the cross and what it's done for us. Come Amen. On. Praise the Lord. And uh, those that know the truth know who's telling the truth Amen. nowadays. Amen. Yes. Praise uh, God. Uh, Thank you, Brother Chris. Go ahead. Uh, Thank you, Brother Jonathan, Sister Amy, Amen. for helping us out. Go One ahead. quick thing, because I, I don't want to take up too much more time. But, You're not taking up time. Uh, but just say this real quickly. Over in the first part, you know, we see where there's no repentance about just using the name of Jesus out of context, you know, not faith in Christ and Him crucified. And then we see the repentance right here. In the, it's like right in the middle of this, we see what true repentance does, what true faith does, I should say, leads to repentance. And then over here on the other half, this other paragraph, you see it's like so much going on. There was confusion. I don't want to read all of it for time's sake, but we see where there's no repentance on this this story to this part right here in the same chapter about you know a silversmith named Demetrius he made shrines for Diana who brought yeah. no small gain unto the craftsmen. In other words, he was making a lot of he was making a lot of profit off of his building these false this false you know he's a silversmith making silver shrines for Diana. He was a right. craftsman, and anyway when the well, see, Paul was having the impact of preaching of Paul, the gospel that was going forth, it was stirring up the devil. And, and it says, you know, sirs, you know that this craft we have our wealth. You know, <laughs> sirs, you know that by this craft we have our wealth. So this category over here was about money. Right. And they done keep been hearing uh, Paul as well. This They said this right here. This Paul has persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods which are made with hands. So that was the slap in their face, you know, because he's preaching against those gods that he was building, you know, these false gods, and they, they didn't like that either. And anyway, so they said, our craft is in danger. <laughs> so, so, so that not only this, our craft is in danger, but also the temple of the great goddess Diana shall be despised. Anyway, make a long story short, I highlighted uh, verse 29. The whole city was filled with confusion. Right. Confusion. And I, I'm just about to make a point on that. See, right. where there's no proper faith, it's confusion. When the message of the cross is not being preached, it's nothing but confusion. Look at this. Look at this right here. Right. In verse 30. Hang on. But to make a long story short, it was all about money. And that particular was all about right. money. The, they, they couldn't rejoice in the in the great work of uh, of the cross. Amen. They couldn't rejoice in, in any of that. They couldn't rejoice in in uh, the the power of God. They was concerned over the money. Mm -hmm. Now, if you bring it to where we are right here in 2023, oh, yeah. present day, where we are right now, the reason that the majority of the the, the church despises those who are determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified and, 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 and proclaim that message exclusively is for that very reason because that digs, that, that cuts a hole in the bottom of their pockets. Yeah, yeah, that, because they, the, the mindset is, well, we can embrace a little bit of this, if not maybe a lot of this word faith count, amen, because they got deep pockets, you know, and so they, they tell us to shut up and sit down and be quiet. And then they rebuke our determination to know everything, anything else. They use, uh, uh, you know, things like where well, you don't have to preach the cross all the time. That's exactly what the devil right. wants the church to think. They right. don't have to it's preach the that. cross all the time because the cross is where he's defeated. That's absolutely right. Amen. Yeah. If it's in you, once again, if he can get the church wrapped up in all sorts of other things, Amen. He'll have his way in the body of Christ. So the the root to the to the those that come against us and others that are determined to know nothing but uh, the, the message of the cross. When you really look at it, it's, it's got everything to do with money. They 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 benefit off of false religion. They never say that, Amen. But they benefit off of uh, standing with. Uh, false religion. When I say false religion, I'm talking about those who are determined to know anything but Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. They're determined to know other things. You can't mix. You can't mingle the two. Uh, one, 
You know, one's going to cancel out the other. That's right. There's, Amen. Right. You can't embrace both of them. Amen. You Go Amen. ahead. I wrote this down to go along with what you said. When people are a minister gets influenced by the enemy, they lose their singular fear of the Lord's one answer, which is the cross, and it will always lead to the great confusion. I got one more verse, and I'll turn it over. Verse 32, Some therefore cried one thing and some another, for the assembly was confused, and the more part knew not whither they were coming together. So the you see, they, they don't know one thing from the next. They, when you don't preach the cross, you know, you know, people, one's going to cry one thing and then some another. What's, what's going to, what is it? What's one thing the Bible says is going to bring about confusion, double-mindedness? Double-mindedness. Amen. It's going to bring confusion. Not, not, not preaching sound doctrine. That's right. But double most of all, Go ahead. Not, not just preaching it. It's believing it. Right. You preach it all day long. Yes, right. yes. But you ain't believing it. Right. Ain't gonna be no fruit. And even I don't care how many times you hear it. That's right. You can hear it. You can come in here every Sunday, every Wednesday night, and you can hear the preaching of the cross. And but if it does not register in your heart, and there's faith, fruit ain't coming. I don't care how long you've been hearing the message of the cross until the heart believes. Right. Right. That's when a change that's, that's comes. That's the key. Amen. That's when a change is coming. And Paul dealt with this right here in 2 Corinthians 7 at the end of the scripture. That was good bringing out about the fear, bro. Yes, the whole yeah, I'm stumbling. Thank you. It says, yes, what a vehement desire. Yes, what zeal. Yes, what revenge. Now, the word revenge here uh, wasn't that they were seeking to revenge themselves, but I got this definition here, and it's a proper judgment which fully executes the vow the, the core values or standards of a particular judge now we know that god is judge we we know this but god's way now listen to this extending from the inner person to the judge to its outcome now these people that read the letter from the apostle paul they repented because they knew what paul was preaching would bring a cleansing of their selves. Wait. It would bring them back to God. And the outcome of this would be life. Yes. The outcome of them believing right would be life. It wouldn't bring no damage to them. Paul said in this, I love the end of this verse. It says, in all things you have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. It was clear to Paul and it was clear to everybody that was there that they had truly repented. That they had embraced what Paul preached. And we know what Paul preached. Paul preached Christ crucified. He warned them that their faith should not rest in anything else but Amen. what Christ Praise did at the cross. Thank you, Lord. And he ought, and you know, earlier we was talking about, you know, the church talking about, well, I rebuke the devil and I'll do all this and that. James chapter 4 verse 6 says but he gives more grace wherefore he says God resists the proud but gives grace unto the humble submit yourselves therefore to God resist the devil that's the only place that yeah. you can resist the devil is submitting yourself that's to right. God right. the only way you can submit yourself to God that's right. and this is what the church needs to get a hold of right. is to deny self Right. Take up the cross Absolutely. and follow Jesus. Only there are you submitting to God because right. that's the only boundaries that God has set up that man can enter in right. and, 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 and have a relationship with the Christ holy God. Outside that, you're fair game to the devil. I don't care that's if you right. come on come to church every Sunday. That's I don't right. care if you're a preacher. I don't care if you're a teacher. That's None right. of that stops the devil. That don't fear the devil. Preach, that does not stop the devil. The only thing that crushed the devil's head was what Christ did at the cross. The Bible says that for this reason was the Son of God manifested, that he might destroy the works of the enemy. Why was Jesus manifested? Why did Jesus come to earth? Come on, church. Yeah, Why did he come here? He didn't come here 
to give people legs and to give sight to the blind and all these miracles. He came here to do one thing, to defeat death and the enemy. Yeah. That we might be able to live a godly life in Amen. this life Amen. right now, Amen. all the way till he takes us Praise home. God. That Praise others God. might be able to see that yes. and, that, and that we might be able to enter into what Christ done, that we might be able to preach that same gospel that Paul preached under the anointing that would draw men unto God. Amen. Well said. That was it. God. That's why that's why Paul told Timothy over in 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13, he said this. He said, I, he said, till I come, it says, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that's within you. Watch the gifts that's within you. Christ is in you. Yes. Christ died that he might manifest him. We know it. 2 Corinthians 4.11. What does the Holy Spirit do? It delivers us over to the death of Jesus. That Jesus right. might be manifested right. in our mortal body. Treasure, right? This is right. where God wants us to be. He wants us to be in these things. To the doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in you. Which is given unto you by prophecy. What does that mean? That means by the preaching of the cross. Right, yeah. That's the only way man can receive right, the right. things of God. By hearing. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. We hear the preaching of the cross. The Holy Spirit moves upon our hearts as we are believing what we're hearing. And all of a sudden, here comes the fruit. Here comes the changed life. Here comes the new man. The old man being crucified. Now we have a new man. Amen. Hallelujah. In Christ Jesus. He says, Medi he says meditate. This is uh, 1 Timothy 4 and 15. He says, meditate upon these things. Give yourself wholly to them. It says that your property may appear to all. Take heed unto yourselves and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this you shall both save yourself. Now, now listen to what Paul, he said you shall save yourself by continuing in them that you shall save yourself and them that hear you by preaching this gospel, by preaching Christ crucified and not backing up, not letting the mixture come in, not letting things corrupt and, 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 and pull us away from anything that would cause us uh, to frustrate the grace of God. Right. Paul also said in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14, listen to what he says here. He says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, yes. carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men. Right. And cunning craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. It says, but speaking the truth in love may grow up unto him in all things. There's the only place you're going to grow. You ain't growing any other place. Amen. You're not going to grow any other place but by the truth in love. Christ right. and right. him crucified. Right. That Absolutely. is the truth in love. Being determined to preach that and that alone. Which takes the enemy and he slews the, it, it, it crucifies you unto the world and unto the enemy placing you in Christ now you're Praise hid God. in Christ Praise and you don't have to worry and be fretted about the enemy anymore Amen. because you're now hid in Christ and the power of the enemy has been destroyed but what happens when we begin to waver in what Christ did at the cross what happens when we begin to get a little bit of this and a little bit of that in heaven? First Corinthians. Let's go back to First Corinthians. We're in Second Corinthians seven. Let's go back to First Corinthians, the first letter, chapter ten, starting in verse one. It says, "Moreover, brethren, it says, I would not that you should be ignorant." Come on. How that all our fathers were under the clouds and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the clouds and in the sea. And they all did eat the same spiritual drink. And they said, and they did all drink the same spiritual drink. 
For they drunk of that spiritual rock that followed them. That was Christ and Him crucified. And they continued to drink. That they means that they continued to drink. And they continued to drink. And that rock was Christ. Absolutely. That rock was Christ. Amen. It says, but with, but with many of them, God was not well pleased. For they were overthrew in the wilderness. Now these things are an example to the intent that we should not lust right. after evil things as they also lusted. Right. Neither be ye idolaters as were some of them as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Let us let us, let us, let Amen. us, Amen. neither, it says, neither let us commit fornication. Now we know now us is the church. That's the yeah. church. It's, Paul was preaching to the church in Corinthians when he heard about fornication going on in the church. Right. He was dealing with it. He said, it said, let us not commit fornication as some of them committed and failed in one day three and twenty thousand. And let us not tempt God, as some of them also tempted and were just destroyed by the serpents. Neither murmur, as some of them murmured and were destroyed by the destroyers. Right. It says, now all these things happen unto them for an example. Mm -hmm. Unto us, as it is written, it says, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore let us think he standeth, take heed lest he fall. It says, There is no temptation taking you that is such uncommon to man. But God is faithful, who will suffer you to be tempted above that which not you are sure. able, not, not, not suffer. Yeah. Will, will not suffer you to be a tempted, tempted above that you are able. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you shall be able to bear it. That way he made is what Paul preached to the church. What Christ will do at the cross. What it says, Paul was always telling the people, he says, I speak as to wise men, judge ye what I say. The cup of blessing which we bless is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which was broke. Is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being made are one bread, one body, and we are all partakers of that. What Christ did at the cross. Yeah. We are all partakers of that. He said, do not let anything come in. He, he warned them here that you can't drink of the cup of the Lord and the cup of the devil right. and cannot be a partaker of the Lord's table and the table of the devils. Right. The church has made excuses that the child of God who is in Christ can still maintain a relationship with Christ and stay in sin. That's the biggest lie that has ever been propagated to the people. That we can continue to right. stay in sin right. and maintain salvation right. and a testimony of Christ to the world when the world sees right through it. The world sees right through it. They, they see you on the job, Brother Jonathan. They see me on the job. They see us out in this world, how we act toward our family or how we act toward others. Oh, they see these things. Right. And listen, they, they, they will use these things to try to have a way of escape, to escape the conviction of the gospel. They'll even lie on you. That's what they did to Paul That's right. That's when, right. when he showed up, yes, sir. when this guy was making these silver dolls for this woman, Diana, right. and, he, and he began to rebuke her, and she shut up, right. and they lost uh, sales, they lost they uh, money. Money. That's right. What they do to and, Paul? And that that was part of the Apostle Paul's concern as it pertains to this letter that Titus was taken to Corinth. You know, are they going to receive? Are, are they, they going, going to receive? Are they going to throw up all of these excuses? Well, he's not really an apostle. Who does he think he is? You know, and all of the other excuses. You know, 
that the, the, he was concerned whether or not they would throw up. And so he rejoiced greatly when Titus come back with word that, that they received this man. They received And they received Paul. You know, they received him. They recognized him as being the apostle Paul, you see. And they wouldn't have done that if they would not have seen the letter and read it and believed what Paul was and preaching. And believed, that's And right. believed. So it all boils down to where your faith falls, right. where you're right. believing. Yeah. That's why it's that's why Paul was always pointing people to Christ and him crucified right. and never backing up about right. it, never That's letting right. anything else in, never mixing his words with a little bit of psychology, with a little bit of thoughts from this book, that book, or all these other things. He strictly sought the face of the Lord, and every time he sought the face of the Lord, the Lord would lead him straight to Calvary. Absolutely. Every time. Absolutely. The Holy Spirit is never going to lead the believer. Listen to me, church. You need to get a hold of this. Even if you're not in a church, even if you may be a person that's bound by sin, even if you may be a person that's never believed and, and, and uh, just full of sin and just rebellious, the Holy Spirit will never lead you a to a place that will lead you captive of sin. Right. He will Amen. never lead you to a place where you'll stay bound up in sin. He's always going to lead you to the place where the chains will fall, where victory will come, where the grace of God Praise will flow God. abundantly, and, and peace and understanding and love and knowledge and meekness and all these things that Paul saw in the church that day when they repented. How that they how they had a zeal of that the, they had cleansed their self and yes. the, the indignation, the fear, the vehemence, uh, desire, the zeal, the revenge, all those things. It was made clear that they it's time, church, that people see that you're clear on where you stand in the gospel. You're either standing for what is right all the time, or you're not standing. For what is right at all. Right. Amen. That's Amen. and that's just I just love that. That was a powerful verse of scripture. Amen. Right there. Amen. You know, we say it all the time. Uh, just back and back and up with just making it clear. You know, our our responsibility as ministers of the gospel, preachers of the cross, is you know, a line has been drawn that separates Christianity from the apostate church. Yes. Right. There's a line that separates one from the other, and that line is the cross. It's cross line. The cross. Amen. The cross is what separates right. the true Amen. church from the apostate Hallelujah. church. Hallelujah. That's right. And it's our responsibility to make that clear. Make Amen. Clear. When most of the church is making it blurry. That's right. You know, the confusion. Right. right. Amen. And, and they do that by, they may get up and they might preach the cross, but man, they, they're they marching with their arms locked with all sorts of people that are not. There you so go. what that does you know, it's it's a it's a double standard, like Simon Peter was doing. Paul rebuked right. him, and in the same essence that Paul had to rebuke Simon Peter at that time, God has raised up ministers like ours to do the same thing. Amen. To to remind the church, we must make this line the cross. We must make the cross the cross clear. clear. Amen. And not make it blurry with all of our apostate associations, yes. you know, and relationships. And it doesn't matter if the church benefits from them in some way. We're not benefiting the people at all if we're embracing, you know, the word faith people or whoever they might be. Amen. amen. The line has to be drawn. Amen. They either repent and get on board the message of the cross. And if they do, they will denounce their own relationships, partnerships, and their own religion. Paul they did. will do that. Paul did. If they embrace the truth, they will do that. Amen. If they just claim to be uh, preaching the cross, and they might mention the cross to try to back up their claim, which is, but if they're, they're still associating with all of these uh, uh, people that are not embracing the, truck, the cross wholeheartedly and exclusively, amen. It sets a double standard, brings confusion in the church. 
and it makes the gospel blurry. Amen. Amen. And, and you know, those that the mature, try to be careful how I say this, because even those can be led away, led away because we saw uh, the apostle Peter. Yes. Right. Amen. The, Paul said he did he, they, he said they, speaking not only of him, but Barnabas and all of them. That's right. Amen. They, they, uh, they walk not uprightly. Yeah, James is right. that. Absolutely. Yes, that's right. Amen. Cause and division in the body of Christ. Dissension. Amen. Division. And so Paul had to deal with that. Amen. And uh, it's interesting that all of that took place. And then they called that church in Antioch. They were called Christians there. You know why? Because it was obvious that this group of people, these disciples, were that they saw Jesus in him. They were labeled Christians. Yes, for, yes. First, that is that that says so much to me. Yes, it does. Amen. They were called Christians in Antioch first. Not, not, Jerusalem. In, Jerusalem. not in Jerusalem. Not in Jerusalem. Not in Jerusalem. They're they're over, you know, embracing law. Circumcision. On their, yes, circumcision, which is just another word for law, right. really. Yeah. Amen. Identified with law. So over Jerusalem, amen, they're embracing something other than the message that Paul is preaching, which is the cross. Amen. Alone. Alone. Right. Amen. The cross alone, apart from the law. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank but you, God, so the light is being removed from Jerusalem. Now see all this. And the light of the gospel is being moved now to Antioch. Now they're being called Christians first in Antioch. Hallelujah. And from Antioch, not Jerusalem. There you go. And I'm going to bring, we ain't going to have time tonight, but I'm going to bring out something as it pertains to that. Amen. Paul would he would lead credence to Jerusalem, but he he did that for a specific reason. I'm going to bring it out next Wednesday night. Amen. Keep you on the edge of your seat, uh, waiting on that. I am too. But but <laughs> Amen. But the, there from Antioch, their evangelism throughout the Roman Empire was spearheading. From that place, say, man. Amen. Uh, it's, it's, it's interesting when when I look at that and I think about that. And you brought it out. You know, those things are for our example, not just the Old Testament, but those things that we see took took place in the book of Acts yes. and in the epistles. That you know, we can make a right now. Uh, uh, you know. Uh, see that as a right now example to us. You know, the, the light can be removed yes. from the place that's always that's always seen yes. to uh, to be the light. It can be removed, Amen, and brought to these little uh, churches out here around the country that's determined to know nothing. There you go. But this, that, but Jesus Christ and Him crucified. The, there's a shift going on right now, ladies and gentlemen. Whether you're willing to see it or not, it's up to you. Amen. Whether you receive these things or whether you're willing to believe it or not, there's a shift going on right now. Right. Amen. And God is beginning to use uh, those that base, uh, things. Uh, base things and those things that one time people were unwilling to identify with ministers and ministries, but God is now using these just as he did Saul of Tarsus. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Just as he did this man, Thank changed his name to Paul. Amen. I'm going to, the Lord said, I'm going to show this man the many things he will suffer for my name's sake. Amen. And so here's his man. He said, I'm a debtor to all humanity. All Take humanity. this gospel Hallelujah. to the rich, the poor, the, yes. the heathen, the rich, it didn't matter, and the barbarian, even those that are in Rome, where that's he would right. probably, and I think that's referring to the place where Amen. he would lose his, his life or his life would be, well, he really didn't lose it. Amen. He was where he sat, was allowed himself to be sacrificed, or uh, they removed his hair from his shoulders. History teaches us, Amen. But you know, the the Christian don't really lose their no, life. No, he didn't lose it. You don't, don't lose, lose your life. We we just step out of this world into the next, and it's eternal, Amen. We're, we're our life, the moment 
that we embrace Christ, the, 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 the gospel and truth, Christ and him crucified, and we're, we're translated out of Adam into Jesus. That moment, by faith, our life begins forever. Amen. Amen. We don't lose our yes. life. We just make a, well, our address just changed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> but, but we're seeing that happening uh, right before our eyes. Amen. And, uh, you know, it's also interested in 70 AD, uh, Jerusalem was literally plowed under. Jesus would, uh, would uh, allude to that in a statement he made one day when he said, the, the no, stones no, no. here that you see, there's not a single one that won't be uh, uh, turned over. Right. And in right. 70 AD, Jerusalem was, was plowed under, living in all of their places of worship, the synagogues, the, everything that had anything to do uh, with Jerusalem was, was plowed under and destroyed. Amen. And, 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 we, and there's a shift going on right now, ladies and gentlemen, that you need to be awakened to. You have to get your eyes off of men and ministries. Get your eyes on Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come back to that first love. Amen. Amen. Which is Jesus Christ and Him crucified, clinging to that old rugged cross. You, Turn man. from everything else. These partnerships. I don't care whether you love me or like me, you turn me off, whatever you want to. Amen. But these partnerships with the word, faith, people, and these other religions for the sake of putting money in your pocket, amen, is not going to float much longer. Amen. It's not. It's amen. Right. It's not going to float much longer. Amen. It's time to come out of that false yeah. religion uh, and embrace the truth of the gospel. Get on board the ark. Get on board you, what God's thank doing. You, Lord, what you do. Amen. It's time. The time is now. Time. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And uh, the devil don't like me saying these things. Most of the church don't like me saying these things. Amen. But uh, they didn't like the Apostle Paul either. Amen. Like it. It's the last day. It is the last day. Amen. The message of the cross has been presented in your, your life eternally and your life presently. It's going to be determined by what you do with the cross. That's it. That's it. You reject it to embrace personalities, ministers, and ministries, or you turn away from that and embrace the cross, and you live abundantly now and also forever. Hallelujah. Let me say it again. Your life eternally and your life presently is solely determined by what you do with the cross. That's Amen. It. Well, praise it. the Lord. Amen. Well, once again, let me say I'm delighted and thrilled that you join us tonight. Amen. Thank Brother James, Brother Jonathan for their good input tonight. Thank we you. pray that you've been blessed. I pray once again that uh, what you've heard tonight has been deposited on fertile ground of the heart Thank that it will you, manifest and to change lives. Amen. Let me encourage you to join us back Sunday morning at 10 o'clock as we gather in this sanctuary to worship our great God, to praise our King of Kings Hallelujah. and the Lord of Lords. Thank Hallelujah. You. And uh, we're going to worship Him. We're going to preach the gospel, which is the cross. And yes. I'm looking forward to it. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Love you each and every one. Amen. Praise God.